What's up video Ford nation? This is video for Ruan with another awesome video for tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at rendering image sequences from 3ds max. So there are basically three main reasons why we render to image uh, sequences and not to MOV files or AVI files. When you render an image sequence, it will basically render one image file per frame of your animation. So the number one reason of uh, rendering image sequences is basically, let's say you've got 100 frames in your animation and you start rendering a MOV file or an AVI file. And halfway through your render, your PC crash or you've got a power outage or anything like that, you will lose your entire render because that file will actually be corrupt. But if you render um, an image sequence, each frame will be recorded separately as an image file. So if your PC crash in the middle, say at frame 50, then you will have frame 1 to 49. That will actually be saved. And when you boot up your computer again, you can actually carry on and render from frame 50 to 100. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is the alpha channel. So basically when we render to an image sequence format like PNG files, those PNG files will have a alpha channel that's always useful when compositing later on. Reason number three is codec compatibility. So which means basically if you use a MOV file or AVI file, some compositing software won't be compatible with those codecs. But when you're rendering to an image sequence such as PNG files, then you should be safe in most compositing applications such as After Effects or any other compositor that you might use. So let me show you how to render to an image sequence. So let's quickly set up a very basic animation. So I'm just going to create a cube and I'm going to click on auto key, set a keyframe and let's go to frame 100 and I'm just going to move the cube across the screen, switch off auto key so we've got a basic animation. And then let's click on rendering, render, setup. So first of all, uh, we want to render the entire animation. So we're going to click on active time segment 0 to 100 because we want to render every frame from 0 to 100. Okay, let's set our output size to HDTV, make sure it's 1920 by 1080. So that's the resolution of your frame. So let's scroll down a bit. And when you get to render output, you're going to click on files. And this is where you can tell your uh, renderer where to save these files. So I'm just going to go to my desktop and I'm going to create a folder. And let's call this render. And I'm going to go into that render. And then we see save as type. We're going to change that to PNG image. And we're going to give it a name. Let's just call this test render for now. And then very importantly, click on setup. And you want to ensure that alpha channel is ticked. And then you're going to click on OK and then save. Okay, back in render setup, you want to make sure that save file is ticked. And then we're going to click on render and your image sequence will start rendering. So let's just make this a little bit smaller so we can see what's going on here. So you can see that your uh, renderer is actually running. And here on the side, it's saying that your total animation is busy rendering. Current task, that's the frame that's being rendered. And it will also give you time remaining, which is quite quick now because it's a very simple animation. No lights, no nothing like that. And time remaining is about 40 seconds. And you can see uh, it's rendering 101 frames because we're rendering from 0 to 100, which is 101 frames. So if I go to my desktop while that's actually rendering and I go into the render folder that we created, you can see that it's busy rendering all these frames as PNG files. So if I double click on one of these, it's a normal image file. And these files contain an alpha channel as well. So that's great when you're compositing. And there you go. You can see it finished uh, up the render now. So we've got 101 files here. And now you can basically just drag and drop these files into your compositor, which we will look at later um, on in this lecture. And you can start compositing. So that's rendering an image sequence from 3ds Max. And also be sure to check out some of our other awesome tutorials on the VideoFort YouTube channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.